Hi, so in this video we're going to take a look at molecular orbital energy diagrams. Okay, so molecular orbital energy diagrams actually look quite similar to the diagram I showed you in the last video. In fact, they're pretty much exactly the same. I'm going to demonstrate what molecular orbital energy diagrams are by drawing some out for some simple diatomic molecules. Let's take a look at H2+. So this is going to be very similar to what I've already shown you guys, but I'm just going to redraw it um, for revision's sake. Okay. So the molecular bonding orbital diagram looks like this. So we draw two single atomic orbitals to either side. And along the middle we have our molecular orbitals. So the bonding molecular orbital will be lower, so down here, as it's of lower energy. And the antibonding molecular orbital, higher, as it's of higher energy. Okay. Okay, so this is our bonding MO, and this is our antibonding MO. Okay. Now, hydrogen plus contains only one electron, this electron will go into the lowest energy molecular orbital. It therefore goes into the bonding orbital. Okay, and we represent it with an upwards arrow to show its spin. So remember when we looked at the three different principles and Hun's rule stated, oh sorry, the AFBAB principle stated that the lowest that, the, that an atom will adopt the lowest energy orbital, okay, in terms of its electrons. So this applies, it's, the same thing applies to this concept. So all our electrons will first go into the lowest energy orbitals before the high energy orbitals start being filled up. Okay. As well as this, the same quantum rules apply for molecular orbitals as they do for atomic orbitals in terms of the fact that we can have two electrons, each with opposite spin. Okay, so we, I did mention this stuff already, but I'm just reinforcing it now. And the two, we, we represent these um, electrons with two arrows, one pointing up and one pointing down to show the different spins. Okay, so now... Let's have a look at hydrogen, okay? So hydrogen, as we already know, contains a covalent bond in which two electrons are being shared in a single bond, okay? So let's draw this out first. So we have our two hydrogen atoms, our bonding orbital, um, anti-bonding orbital, okay? Okay, so these two electrons will again go into the lowest energy orbital and both will go into this bonding molecular orbital. And we represent the two electrons like so. Alrighty. So what about if we had three electrons? As we do, for example, in hydrogen, oh, helium 2 plus, okay? So let's draw the diagram out. We've already filled up our bonding orbital. So, sorry, let me just draw this diagram out. Okay. So let's draw out the diagram. We've already filled up our bonding orbital with two electrons, okay? So our two electrons have already gone into the bonding orbital. The third electron will therefore go into the next lowest energy, empty molecular orbital. We can see what this is clear from our diagram. It's going to be the antibonding molecular orbital. We can also have two electrons in this orbital, just as in the bonding molecular orbital. So we'll put the third electron up there with an up-facing arrow. Okay, so this is where our third electron goes, next lowest energy level. What about helium-2? Just plain old helium-2. 
All right. So this has four electrons. So I'll draw this one out now. We have our two atoms. Our anti-bonding and our bonding. Okay. So the first two electrons will go into the bonding molecular orbital and then the next two will go into the antibody molecular orbital. So we've filled up all of the lowest energy orbitals. Okay, remember this is bonding and this is antibonding. Alrighty. Okay, so what about molecules with more than four electrons? Okay, where do the next electrons go? The best way to explain this is again with a diagram using lithium-2 as an example. Okay. So we're going to use lithium-2. So each lithium atom has three electrons. We can have the first two electrons in the 1s orbital and the next two electrons go into the 2s orbital. I'm oh, sorry, the next electron will go into the 2s orbital, which we showed in an earlier video was the next lowest energy atomic orbital. So when we have lithium atoms come together, just as the 2 minus orbital combine, so do the two 2s orbitals. Okay? So we know that the 1s and the 2s orbitals are occupied in a lithium atom. So when we have the 1s orbitals combine, the 2s orbitals also combine. I'm going to draw this out for you guys. Okay. So we have our 1s orbitals combining down here. I won't bother drawing out the ones to the either side, but I will draw out. Oh, sorry. Yep. I will have this here. Okay, so these are our 1s orbitals. Okay. We then have our 2s orbitals up here. Okay, so this is. Slight, we, can even, we can represent the fact 2s orbitals are slightly bigger by drawing a slightly bigger. Okay, so we'll have our first four electrons going to the molecular orbitals that come from the combination of the 1s orbitals as previously done. Okay, so our first four electrons go in here. Okay. However, here we have a slight difference. We know that when bonds are created, what matters is the valence electrons. This means that no net bonding comes from the inner electrons. We've seen this in play many times. Think about when you draw Lewis dot electron diagrams to represent covalent bonds. Therefore, we regard these 1s molecular orbitals both as non-bonding. Okay? So this here, this is all regarded as non-bonding. Okay? So we can write that down. So both of these are non-bonding. This is very important for when we later allocate bond orders. Okay? We then get the combination of our two s orbitals which is of higher energy. We show this by drawing it above the 1s orbitals as we've done here. The exact same rules apply as when we combine the 1s orbitals. The only difference is, as I've shown you, we draw them slightly bigger. These are our valence electrons, okay? And so the normal rules apply in terms of bonding molecular orbitals and the anti-bonding molecular orbitals, okay? So the next two electrons will go into the bonding molecular orbital that comes from the 2s, okay? So again, we fill them up with higher energy, I mean, in, in increasing energy. This is really important to note now. These 1s orbitals, they're both non-bonding. We actually don't have to worry about them. Sometimes we don't even draw them out. I've drawn them out here just for explanation. Um, it's these combination of these 2s orbitals that we have to worry about. So the combination of the valence electron orbitals, because we know it's the valence electrons that play um, the most important role when it comes to bonding. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.